Welcome back to Elam.life. My name is Ephraim. I'm glad that you're joining us today. We've had our Starlink a little over two months now, and I have a pretty good idea of its operations in this area and as we travel around the uh, US. So I wanna share what I've discovered with you and let you make the decision whether Starlink is right for you or not. But first I wanna talk about how it's connected into the Airstream because we're doing it a little bit different than how Starlink intended it. Normally, they have a, their own router, and then you have to buy an Ethernet adapter if you want an Ethernet signal out of it. And as you've seen in the past videos, we've just bypassed their router entirely because it's unnecessary. Starlink uses a process which they call Enterprise Level Network Address Translation. That's a fancy name, it's just different IP addresses and it basically means that no matter what you have a double NAT situation. Now those of you who are gamers are going to understand the implications of that. Um, if you're just streaming video or using it for teleconferencing things like that where you're actually going out and talking to a server you're probably not going to notice any real difference in that. But there are some applications that need a public IP address. And currently on the residential or the RV, that's not available. So you have the double NAT situation. And if you use their router, now you probably have a triple NAT situation if you're tying it into your Airstream trailer. This classic uses a PEP link. This is a Max BR1 Mini. And it's actually a pretty powerful router. It does everything that we really need within certain limitations. I don't wanna to say too much negative about Airstream because I do love our Airstream, but their tech design department is lacking. And when they put together their communications packages for the internet, they have some problems. And we'll do another video about how to get around those problems so that you have a first class network in your trailer. But today we're just gonna focus on Starlink. This is the Peplink Max BR1 Mini that comes in the Airstream. You'll notice that it has a LAN port, a WAN port. It has a couple of options for powering. On the back side up here on the top, it's got a MIMO antenna set up so it has two cellular antennas. It has a GPS antenna and a single antenna for Wi-Fi which is 2.4 gigahertz. Now the newer version of this actually has a MIMO antenna for Wi-Fi and it's both 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz which is a better system. I'm not sure we'd change anything about how the system fits into the Airstream other than what we've already done just because I like the setup that we've got and we'll do another video on that. For us what we're most interested in is this WAN port. The way this router comes from Airstream they control the router and they have this WAN port turned off right now so that it's just another LAN port and you have to get around that. If you're buying one of these types of routers for yourself, you're not gonna really have this issue. If you're buying the PEPLINK, you're going to need the WAN option in there, which is typically about a $100 license. There's a couple of other things that come with that that are kind of nice, such as load balancing and in control and things like that. But we're just using the standard router that Airstream supplied. The first thing we had to do was get Airstream out of the system so they no longer control this router. Now the drawback to that is on your app that they provide you called Airstream Connect or Smart I guess depending on which version you've got you lose the location information because they're controlling it through an apparatus provided by Peplink called in control. Airstream will not release the router from in control so that you can register it in in control, but they won't manage it anymore once you kick them out. So it's 
not a real happy situation, but I believe the benefits of kicking Airstream out of your router are well worth it, as you're going to see, because now we can use Starlink in a seamless application. But the first thing we're going to do is set up this WAN port. So let's go to the computer and get that started. To get your router in the appropriate starting shape, you either have to start with a new router or you have to factory reset the router that came with the Airstream. If you're going to factory reset and you haven't gotten the password from the Airstream tech guys, which is very difficult to do, I might add, you can reset it by simply pressing and holding the reset button on the router for about 20 seconds. Connect up to it. It's going to have the default address of 192.168.50.1. You will have to have an Ethernet cable between your laptop and, or a computer and the LAN port, and then you can use your web browser to go there. And this is where you're going to end up with. You're going to use admin, and then the password is simply admin again and go ahead and log in. The first thing it's going to do is change your current password. So, of course, the existing password is admin, and then you can make whatever password that you want. I already have one that I've selected here, but you can make it the password whatever, and then save and apply. Click OK. Reset. The first thing that will come up is your dashboard. And you can see the cellular is activated. That's because there is a chip in there. However, it's not going to be able to do anything right now because I have the router pulled out of the trailer. No cellular antennas are connected up to it. And I'm sitting here in my shop, which is a metal building. So there will be no cellular connection. Notice that the WAN and Wi-Fi WAN are disabled at this point. If you are dealing with a new PEP wave, you're probably not going to have the WAN connection unless you bought the license for it. I highly recommend it, even though it's 100 bucks, it increases the cost of the router by that much, but it makes the system work seamlessly. Buy the license if you bought the PEPLink router, if you are using the Airstream router, which this one is, then it's they've already purchased the license and it's just part of the router, so that's gonna show up. So what you wanna do is take your Wi-Fi WAN, and you'll notice when you bring the cursor over these little dots on the left side, it turns into a hand. Simply drag that up to the priority two space. Now I like the cellular being the last priority, and I'll explain why in just a little bit. But go ahead and drag that from priority one to the new priority three that just popped up. And then take the WAN and drag it up to priority one. It's as simple as that. For this video, Starlink is not connected. I'm actually just connected to my local network by an ethernet, but for all intents and purposes, it's going to act the same way. Your IP address will be just a little bit different. On the WAN that you just brought up, click on the details, and it will bring up the current details of the system. I like to rename the WAN Starlink, since that's what it is. The DHCP and the NAT routing mode you want to keep the same. But if you want to be able to use your Starlink app when you're connected to your Wi-Fi, you need to do one additional thing. Over here under host name, click on the question mark and you'll see a little pop-up help. And it's gonna ask if you wanna configure a management IP address. Yes, we do. So we're gonna click there and you'll see this management IP address has come up. The Starlink uses network addresses for your local side in the 192.168.100 range. So you're going to name this 192.168.100.2. Leave the net mask 
uh, the way it is there. You don't have to use dot two. You can pretty much use anything from dot two to dot 200. I like to just use dot two because there's only two devices on the system. Dot one will be Dishy or the Starlink router itself, depending on how you've configured that. And dot two will be my router. I prefer just to obtain the DNS servers automatically. If you do this under Starlink, it's just gonna hand you Google's. If you don't wanna use Google, and you wanna use your own, such as OpenDNS, or maybe a DNS server that doesn't track anything, then you're gonna click use the following DNS servers and make that change there. Down here under health check settings, we're just gonna use DNS lookup. If the system can access the DNS servers, it's gonna consider this up. So then scroll all the way down, click save and apply. And now we're back and you can see that the uh, WAN is connected. Now next up, we have the Wi-Fi WAN. This is what Airstream calls the campground Wi-Fi. Right now it's just scanning to see if it can find anything. Let's go ahead and click wireless networks and there you'll see my own personal wireless connection. If I wanna to connect to that, I just hit connect and then it's gonna ask me for the shared key, which I'll type in. I prefer all everything else to be automatic and I click save and now it's gonna try and connect. And it'll take a minute or two. You can see down here as it's working the CPU load, but we'll go ahead and close that. Before I close that though, notice that Palantir now has a gold star beside it. That means that the system has a profile that it has put in place in memory. So we'll close that and you'll see over here in just a few seconds, it's gonna connect up to the Wi-Fi. Okay, now it's connecting, making sure that it can do that. Now you'll notice that it's on standby. It's made a connection, it is connected, it has an IP address and everything, but it is not using that connection. Instead, it's using the Starlink connection up here. Now the really nice thing with this automatic failover is if the WAN connection was to fail, say I unplugged it or it lost power somehow, it will immediately detect that no cable is detected and now it's gonna connect you to Palantir and you've only lost maybe a second or two of time. Now, and we're back up and running now. And then of course, if Starlink comes back up, it's gonna check for connectivity because the cable was now powered up. As soon as it establishes connectivity, you'll see it switch from our wireless connected to Palantir to the Starlink. Now we're back on Starlink. Now the thing about the Wi-Fi WAN is I like that in priority too, because if that's an acceptable connection, I would prefer to use that over cellular because that allows me to have a much lower speed a much lower connection type on cellular, much more affordable. I need continuous connectivity because of how I'm using the system. So cellular is the backup to everything else. So while it's in standby, uh, let's say that you've tried it, um, you don't like it, you don't ever wanna use it again, you can click details over here and you scroll down here to the bottom and you'll see that there's the profile that it has. If we wanna get rid of the profile, you just click the X, click save and apply. And now it's gonna apply the changes, take you back to the dashboard. And in just a minute, it'll, it should drop that connection. Now we're back to scanning. And of course the whole time Starlink was up and running and it is passing data. So you can see by using Peplink's direct application uh, via a web browser, 
you can make changes to your routing much faster than you could if you were using the Airstream Connect app. Now, if you decide that you don't want to use Wi-Fi WAN ever, you can simply just sit there and drag it into the disabled block. And now the system will never use Wi-Fi WAN. If you have a profile on Wi-Fi WAN, anytime you enter into the area of that particular Wi-Fi signal, it will automatically connect to it. But it will only use that connection if it's the highest rated priority. So right now, it won't connect to it because it's completely disabled. If I move this back up to priority two, and if I had a profile stored for any of the Wi-Fi signals, it will automatically connect to them, but only if it needs to. Now there is one issue with the hardware version one of the PEPLINK, and this is something that Airstream really struggled to figure out and they never could. And that's that the PEPLINK acts as an access point for your Airstream. But if you have a Wi-Fi WAN, and like right now it's just scanning because it, it doesn't have a profile and it's just trying to figure out what's available there, that will affect the throughput of anything going through this Wi-Fi AP because it's the same radio that does both of them and it just switches back and forth between them and it can't do them simultaneously. Now they have a new hardware version, hardware version three, which has 2.4 and 5.8. And I don't know if that's the same problem because I haven't had my hands on one of those yet. But what I did is use a different system for my local access point and so I just turned this one off. Now, the Wi-Fi in the PEP link is only used for Wi-Fi WAN. My local AP takes care of my needs locally, and I prefer that because I have a much better local access point system. And we'll do another video about that in the future so that you can get a first-rate system in your Airstream as well. Now, there is one last thing that you need to do. You'll notice if I go to network settings, in control is actually enabled in this and Airstream has registered this particular router for their in control program. Now I don't believe they can do anything because I've changed the password to log in, but I'm not sure if in control is capable of loading another configuration file without actually using that password. I prefer not to take a chance. So we're gonna to go to system here, under in control on the left hand side. We come over to the controller and we're gonna change that to disabled and save it. <clears throat> Click apply changes and the changes are now applied. So if I go back to network, you'll see that I no longer have that warning that in control can make changes to this system. And that's really all there is to it. It's very simple. It's a very powerful interface. I actually use it off of my cell phone when I'm making changes in the Airstream. It works really, really well. That's all I had for you today. So we'll see you next week and you guys have a great week.